evening to everybody. Um, I would like to say that we come from a very ancient region, but, uh, but we're still, you know, we're still new. The hard borders were only drawn um, after the British left India, and that has really shaped so many things in the subcontinent. So we're, we're an old culture, but we're also new nations, and that comes with its own trials and tribulations. So I would like to talk about what's happening, what has been happening in Nepal um, with the arts, because the artists have really been, um, you know, mounting their resistance from, from the time that the Rana regime took place in 1956. After the British quit India, there was no way that the Rana regime could continue. Its, its ramifications were felt in Nepal, and Chandraman Maske, who studied in the Calcutta Government College of Art, uh, came back to Nepal in 1922 and created cartoons lampooning the Rana rulers of the time. And these posters were discovered. Um, there were several writers and poets um, you know, uh, writing poetry and literature and indigenous voices was repressed. And all, all of this came to a fore. And, you know, a sort of collective voice was growing. So by 1951, um, the people were able to overthrow the Rana regime and King Triyuban was restored as the king. So amidst this euphoria and jubilation, Nepal opened itself up the rest of the world following the overthrow after decades of struggle and sacrifice of the 104 year old Rana oligarchy and the emergence of a democracy emerged in Nepal based on the model of Westminster. But in 1955, when King Mahendra took over after the demise of his father, uh, he started a coup in 1960 and imprisoned VP Koirala and established the partyless that system. But at the same time, he was he understood that culture was a, was very important for national identity. And at this time, we see that all the the uh, you know government institutions to promote the art were built, like the Nepal Association of Fine Arts, uh, several other museums. All happened during this time. This period was marked by we call it landscapes return to village programs and abstract experimentation. And the government commissioned artists to create works for government venues. 1972, with the death of King Mahendra, King Birendra was crowned. And this period was marked by a period of psychophancy and resistance. In 1985, Nepal television was established. Global politics was able to be was able to enter the room of every citizen. I remember watching the fall of the Romanian dictator Nicolas Ceausescu in 1989. The resistance by the public to a dictator made its mark. And the disenchantment with the autocratic rule of King Birendra created dissent on the streets. In 1990, there was a small revolution and more power was, was conceded to the political powers, to the political parties. From 1996 to 2006, that's 10 years, we had a Maoist insurrection. There were 17,886 deaths, 8,191 disabled, and over 1,500 people were dis disappeared. This was also a period of trial and tribulation and great sorrow because this was also the time in 2001 when we also had the Royal Massacre. But during this time, I would say, began the new age of artivism. And I would like to mention artists like Manoj Babu Misra, Durga Baral, Sashi Shah, Ragini Upadhyaya, Jyoti Dewari, Ashmina Ranjit, Susan Chitrakar, and a host of other artists came out on the streets with performances, installations, exhibitions, and they collaborated with writers, poets, with socially aware art practices and try to change and mount pressure on the government. In 2006, 
2006, 2009, we had a new constitution. Uh, the king was overthrown. And this constitution called for 33% representation of women in parliament. It also gave more voice to the indigenous people. So from the art side, uh, we decided that it was important to have a, a international art festival that explored the status of women through the work of artists and poets. So in 2000 and uh, 12, we hosted the first Kathmandu International Art Festival. I remember Dr. Salima Hashmi also curated the Pakistani section with some incredible works from Pakistan. There were Bigam uh, Tayyab Lipi and Mahbub Rehman uh, curated the section of Bangladeshi artists. And from India, we had um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Rekha Modi and from Sri Lanka, there was um, Noli Pereira. Uh, climate change, you know, socially aware practices, resistance to government claiming public lands, all of this led to uh, another Kathmandu International Art Festival, which focused on the issues of climate change. And at the forefront were artists like Hitman Gurung, Chilasa Raj Bandari, Achmina Ranjit, Susan Dangol who came to the forefront and resisted the takeover of public lands. In 2015, Nepal had its great earthquakes and that caused so much destruction. I know Pakistan also has these earthquakes and India. So we are in a climatically vulnerable region, but you know, I, I'm so proud of the artist during this time um, of great sorrow, you know, where so much was destroyed. Artists went to far-flung villages in Sindhupalchok, uh, in Bhaktipur, and in several other regions, Dolakha, and, and started community art projects to alleviate the sorrows of the people. One of the greatest projects that I saw was conducted by Art Tree at Globiasi in Bhaktipur, where the artists lived with the people who had been affected and created community art projects of hope. In 2017, we decided to curate Kathmandu Triennale to create some hope in the city that had been destroyed. Kathmandu was really ravaged by the earthquake. And at that time, you know, uh, artists paid homage to the city uh, by, by dedicating the whole Triennale to the city. It was called the city, my life, the city, my studio. Um, the indigenous artist, S.C. Suman, raised his voice against the in environmental impact of creating Nishgar Airport, which would mean the destruction of 20 lakh sal trees. These things that are happening parallelly in Nepal. Uh, there's also resistance to the over-politicization of the medical sector by art tree, the public performance, and they call this performance the culture of silence uh, and resisted the culture of fatalism, which takes over so much in Nepal. Uh, artists like Hitman Gurung and Sunil Sikhil, Mik Limbu, uh, talk about the pain of migrant workers. And migrant workers, um, the issue of migrant workers is not only a Nepali problem. I meet workers from Bangladesh and Pakistan when I travel to the Middle East from India. So, you know, so many bodies come back in coffins. Uh, so this is a problem that, uh, that artists have also been addressing with their work. Um, in Photo Circle, curated when they curated their um, Photo Circle event, they talked about the pain of indigenous people who have been worked, who have been moved out of forests to create nature reserves. Um, and uh, last so you, year, uh, I'm just about. Ji, please, please. Yeah, please. we exhibited the works by Lovkan Choudhury, a Tharu artist, and Subhas Tamang who researched the mulki ayin created by Jangabadr in 1854, where certain castes were deemed enslavable and expendable. Their works documented the historic discrimination meted out to their communities and spoke of the injustices which were curated and marginalized, marginalized them by the state. So we are getting ready for the Kathmandu Triennale, uh, which was supposed to happen in 2020. 
it's been postponed to March 22, but we're keeping the Bikram Sambat date, which is 82,078, decolonize time and move away from the Western canons of art. And we will be talking about indigenous issues um, and various other topics.